20 most disrespectful moments in NFL history. The NFL is easily one of the most physical sports anywhere in the world, but sometimes things get way more than physical and simply become disrespectful. Whether involving coaches, teammates, or opponents, here are 20 of the crudest, rudest, and downright most disrespectful moments in the NFL. Diving right into the action, we're starting with Andre Johnson and Cortland Finnegan's heated brawl. This happened back in 2010 when the Houston Texans were playing against the Tennessee Titans. Finnegan decided to spice things up by constantly pushing Johnson's buttons with pokes and punches. Late in the game, Andre had taken enough. He ripped Finnegan's helmet off, threw it to the ground, and landed two solid punches. Flags come down. Oh, there's punching now. Yeah, Finnegan and... Eventually, the referees stepped in to break up the fight, but not before a few more swings were taken. These two had completely thrown the spirit of sportsmanship out the door. You can't blame these dudes for hitting each other during games. After all, the aim of the game is to run into your opponents. So when you accuse someone of being soft, it can go from 0 to 100 real quick. One example is from 2012 when D'Angelo Hall and Des Bryant got into a heated argument during a game between the Washington Redskins and the Dallas Cowboys. Both players were caught on camera yelling at each other and had to be separated by teammates. The argument reportedly started when Hall accused Bryant of faking an injury to stop the clock. But what we have up next is even more disrespectful because it involved not a player, but a coach. Yeah, there's no verses in this case, but it's just Jim making a fool of himself. And he did this in a college game. This was in 2016 and the Michigan Wolverines coach had a sideline tantrum that would make any toddler proud. Michigan's defensive line had just gotten flagged for going off sides on a play where Harbaugh apparently felt Ohio State had false started. So what did he do? He flailed his arms, screamed at the refs, and jumped up and down like a pogo stick on steroids. Yeah, this is college and not the NFL, but hey, Harbaugh did coach with the 49ers, and he is part of NFL history. The call. There goes the play card, and it ended up right in the middle of the field. He threw it so Just when you think that things can't get more disrespectful, see what comes up next between... In a post-game interview following the 2014 NFC Championship game between the Seattle Seahawks and the San Francisco 49ers, Seahawks cornerback Richard Sherman called out Michael Crabtree, the 49ers wide receiver, in a rather disrespectful manner. Final play, take me through it. Well, I'm the best corner in the game. When you try me with a sorry receiver like Crabtree, that's the result you're going to get. Sherman had just made a game-saving play against Crabtree, and in an interview, he called Crabtree a sorry receiver and said he didn't like him. You don't have to like him, but calling your opponent a sorry receiver on national TV is a low blow. Crabtree went ahead and responded to the insult by putting the question out on social media if they thought Sherman was overrated. It's one thing to disrespect coaches or players, but when you disrespect fans, that's something else. It's common for players to disrespect their coaches, referees, or other players, but Michael Vick kicked it up a notch by disrespecting fans of the game. In 2006, Vick, who was the quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons, was caught on camera flipping off fans who were heckling him from the stands during a game against the New Orleans Saints. Vic didn't use his middle finger like most people would. Instead, he used the index and middle fingers together, a gesture commonly known as the peace sign. Sure, it wasn't a full-on flip-off, but Vic wasn't fooling anybody. Doing that just made the fans even more aggravated, and that's what Vic's plan was all along. But this isn't the worst case of players disrespecting fans. Randy Moss scored a touchdown in 2005 during a game between the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers. That's cool, but then he proceeded to fake moon the crowd by bending over and pretending to pull down his pants. While Moss might have intended his actions to be playful, it was anything but. Moss later apologized for his actions, but his fake moon is something the NFL definitely won't forget. Nadamik and Sue is a beast of a defensive tackle, and maybe he was just doing his job, but this time he tackled an opponent when he didn't need to. 
In 2011, Sue decided to give Green Bay center Evan Dietrich Smith a Thanksgiving gift by stomping all over his arm. The Packers were building up a nice lead in the second half while the Detroit Lions were racking up penalties. Down there. Yeah, that's, uh, there it is. I mean, first of all, as he's trying to get... Nobody wants to be on a losing team, especially Sue, so he grabbed a sprawled out Dietrich Smith by the helmet following a play and stepped on his arm. When the final whistle blew, the Lions didn't win the game, but Sue managed to win himself an unpaid two game suspension. When it comes to suspensions, Odell Beckham is definitely one name that will pop up. One of his many suspensions came in 2015 when OBJ had a highly publicized meltdown on the sidelines during a game against the Carolina Panthers. After being repeatedly targeted by Panthers cornerback Josh Norman, Beckham became increasingly frustrated with Norman. So he decided to get physical. You know, since actions speak louder than words. The situation escalated when Beckham launched himself at Norman with a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit and brought about a really nasty sight and a one-game suspension for Beckham. Yet another case of a player losing his cool while on the field. It was a game between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cincinnati Bengals. Things got a little heated during the game, and Steelers wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster delivered a hard hit on Bengals linebacker Von Taz Perfect. The hit caused Burfecht to leave the game with a concussion, and Smith-Schuster was later suspended one game by the NFL for violating the league's player safety rules. Smith-Schuster later apologized for the hit and expressed his commitment to playing the game with integrity and respect. Good to see the remorse, but still, it counts as one of the most disrespectful moments the game has seen. Sometimes, though, players get disrespectful without even getting physical. What comes next is an example of such a case. In 2016, the Carolina Panthers lost to the Denver Broncos in Super Bowl 50. Following the game, Cam Newton refused to speak to the media when he should have had his post-game press conference. Of course, that didn't sit well with many people and Newton was criticized for his behavior, calling him unprofessional and disrespectful. Newton later explained that he was still processing the loss and didn't want to say anything he would regret. When you put it like that, we kind of get his point, but still, at that moment, it was disrespectful, especially for a Super Bowl. Remember Smith Schuster's name popped up earlier? Here's another moment with his name on it. This next one seems to serve some sort of karma for Smith Schuster. Remember how he hit perfect? Well, this time, Von Bell was the one doing the hitting and Smith didn't get out unscathed. It was another game between the Steelers and Bengals, and during the game, safety Von Bell came like a wrecking ball and got a perfect hit on Smith-Schuster. Roethlisberger, Juju Smith-Schuster is blown up, and the whistles blow. It was one hell of a hit, and Smith-Schuster had to leave the game with a knee injury. He was later able to return to play, but Bell got away without even getting a penalty. Anyone who knows Tyreek Hill probably knows his signature peace sign. So this time, Antoine Winfield had had enough, and he decided to give the wide receiver a taste of his own medicine. In a game between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Kansas City Chiefs, Antoine Winfield Jr. made a memorable play against wide receiver Tyreek Hill. After Hill had been taunting the Buccaneers throughout the game, Winfield responded by throwing Hill's signature peace sign back in his face. This might not have been soul-scorching disrespect for anyone else, but when someone shoves your trademark back in your face, it definitely irks you a little. Guess what? Even sports reporters have gotten some disses the NFL players dish out. This one dates way back to 1998, so only veterans can relate. Ryan Leaf, the number two draft pick, got into a heated shouting match with a reporter during a press conference. Don't talk to me, all right? Knock it off! The reporter asked Leaf about his attitude and behavior on the field because Leaf was kind of known for his history of confrontational behavior. Maybe asking him the way the reporter did wasn't the best idea, as Leaf took offense to the question and began shouting obscenities at the reporter. Leaf's career is later known for being a bust, but this moment remains one of his biggest highlights. Up next, another sideline ruckus. 
Greg Hardy's temper wasn't a new thing by 2015, but this case of him exploding like a firecracker on the sideline is one we have to mention. The Dallas Cowboys player was not a happy camper after the New York Giants returned a kickoff and ended up winning on an incredible touchdown. The dude threw down his helmet like it was a hot potato and got all up in the face of a special teams coach and wide receiver Des Bryant. What makes this disrespectful is how much he disregarded the basic spirit of sportsmanship and got so hot after a fair loss. This dude was always in trouble for going too far. Throughout his career, Burfecht has been involved in numerous controversial plays, including helmet-to-helmet -helmet hits, late hits, and unnecessary roughness. His last straw happened in a game where he hit his helmet on Indianapolis Colts tight end Jack Doyle for no particular reason. His red ledger certainly didn't help his case. Burfecht's repeated violations eventually led to his suspension for the entire 2019 season. That's what you get for disrespecting the NFL. In 2006, during a game between the Tennessee Titans and Dallas Cowboys, defensive tackle Albert Hainsworth committed one of the most infamous acts in NFL history. After being blocked by Cowboys center Andre Garrod, Hainsworth stomped on Garrod's helmetless head, causing a laceration that required 30 stitches to close. Ouch! Hainsworth was suspended for five games, the longest suspension for on-field behavior in league history at the time. Just when you think that disrespect can't get any worse, you get Jamal Adams tackling a mascot so hard that the poor thing landed in the hospital. In 2019, Jets safety Jamal Adams thought it would be fun to uncork a huge hit on Pat the Patriot, New England's mascot on the sidelines of a practice. Imagine Pat's shock when all that muscle hit him out of nowhere. According to Adams, the mascot was running around and everyone was booing him, so he said, you know what, let me go tackle him. Not cool, man, not cool.